I came out here in 88 and I, I wanted to raise my son because I grew up without my father. So I wanted to break the cycle and come raise my son. And I wanted my grandkids to know their grandfather because my grandfather died before I had a relationship with him. So I came to Texas and I've been out here since 1988. My son passed away in 2018, he was 36. And that was my only child. I had a grandson and a granddaughter, they was twins. The mother came back and took my grandson back to Houston. So I have no family out here. And I just, I just lost everything. I lost my job. I lost a little brother in 2020 and that, me and my little brother was close. So I kind of lost that. And then when I came back in 2020, I lost my job. How I first met Nolan, um, I received a referral from his behavioral health counselor. Um, he was needing a little assistance with getting back on his feet. Um, so I began to meet with him on a weekly basis. We worked on some resume skills, job hunting, and looking for housing. You recently started a job as a school crossing guard. How is that going? I love it. You love it? Love What's your kids. favorite part of the job? The kids. The kids. They make me happy. Great. Is that something you see yourself staying with for a while? Yeah, for a while. I referred you to an agency a while back um, that could assist you with housing. I know they came out to see you once. Um, how's that going? She called me and we set up appointment, but she never came out there. So I tried to call her again and, and left a message, but she never got. So I just keep calling, leave a message until mm -hmm. she called me back and okay. get with me. I got a friend in uh, Sacramento, her name is Jeanette, uh, and she be, you know, telling her to help me a lot. No, you need to go see counseling and get with the church and stuff like that. So I'm trying to do that now. And I'm just trying to get help. As a black man, you just feel like you can deal with anything. You know, I don't need nobody. I, I can get through this. I pray to God, I, I'll be all right. But you just need help. And you need to talk to people about it. Have you been checking your email to make sure um, they haven't sent you anything or have they been in contact with you? No, I haven't checked because you told me I might delete it. So I, I really ain't been checking my email. Okay. Well, do you want to check your email while you're here? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't mess it up. Probably did mess it up. Okay, we can. Uh, yeah, you can check. You want me to look? Yeah, just look for housing authority. Okay, let's start at the top and see what we have. Okay, so we know you're on the list. Sometimes it can take a couple of months. Um, from the past, I've seen about two to three months it can take for them to contact you. So hopefully we'll have something coming up soon. All right. But make sure you stay in contact with the agency um, that I provided for you. Get that paper sign, turn it in, and stay in contact with the lady. Okay. And hopefully we'll get you a house pretty soon. I told Shasin in uh, April, you know, a couple of times, if I had a gun, I probably would have killed myself a while back, you know, because I was so depressed and hurt. And, and it's like every time you, you try to get up on your feet, somebody push you down. And you, you get tired of fighting, and you, you, you know, you're doing the right thing, and everybody's telling you no, you no, or they pushing you down, and you're just like, well, damn, why I keep trying? I'm not winning. So, you know, I listen to uh, God and to every day is a new day. So you just get up and keep going. Social determinants of health can impact behavioral health. If there are no jobs in the community, health care, that becomes secondary. If you don't know where you're going to sleep, where your next meal is coming from, are you going to receive a paycheck, um, it starts to wear on people. They become sad, they become anxious, they become depressed. Um, it's hard to function. It took everything I did to come down here. You know, it's it's a uh, it's the pride that a man have. You know, like and while I was in L.A., I I didn't need nothing. I always did it. You know, uh, but out here, you need help. You know, and I I did it for my son. You 
You know, I really was just lost without my son. And I, I, I miss him so much, you know. It just hurt a lot. I'm just out here by myself. I call my grandkids every other day just to talk to them, you know. But uh, just people out there need help. You got to go help them. Go out there and just ask them, do they need help, and, and give it to them. Just quit treating us like people don't care. You got to care about people.